Well, good evening, this is Handbox Steve coming to you on the 28th of February, the end of the month already, oh my goodness. And we are going through an unusually warm period. Uh, everything is melting out there and uh, the maple sap is running already. Okay, so this evening I thought I would do a bit of a uh, behind the camera uh, uh, a video because I have a few things that um, I'd like to show you about the money situation, uh, the Bitcoin, Litecoin situation. Uh, I did purchase a Nano S Ledger wallet. This is a hardware wallet uh, to keep your cryptocurrencies on. Uh, there's a little screen here and um, it's uh, quite simple to operate. You just plug it into your computer system and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, but I'm just going to go through the purchasing because um, even with this there is a couple of scams going on that you have to be aware of. And one is called the man in the middle uh, scam and what happens is you end up one way or another by going to different websites or who knows where these, how these things get spread around uh, but you end up with some malware on your computer uh, that affects the receive codes on your Nano S hardware wallet. Now uh, it, it actually doesn't change the address on here but what it does uh, is it inserts another person's address. When you click in that receive uh, address that you have picked up it changes that as you click it in it changes it instantly to the other person who's stealing your cryptocurrency okay and there is a way to check that um, you can check in this uh, in the nano the address that you sent it to and uh, also the security now when you get your nano uh, there will be a 24 password combination and that is the first thing that you do uh, is you it'll be on your nano and you write down that combination it's a randomly chosen combination and this brings us into the second scam there was a story of a guy uh, who bought a ledger wallet on ebay and uh, when it arrived uh, he opened it up and uh, of course put some coin in there and when he went back in there uh, it was gone. Okay, so what had happened was this person who was selling on eBay had opened the box and had written in the 24 words on the sheet that comes in the box. When you get the uh, when you get the box, it's a very very well built box, nice and tidy. Uh, there you go. There's your sheet right there with your 24 word place as well in his this came pre filled in and um, I am assuming that they typed it in so it didn't look uh, suspicious with handwriting but anyways uh, this is your retrieval code if anything happens to this wallet you need this retrieval code uh, do not choose your own words um, no matter how random you think you are being you will never be as random as a random word generator on the computer. Okay, so you have to be very aware of this security. If this sheet comes pre-filled in, do not use that nano wallet. Now, uh, that's the reason why I went on to the uh, nano website. Uh, this is a, a France-based um, company and uh, by the time you got the conversion in and the shipping it was exactly the same price as buying it here in North America at $130 and uh, I think it is a great investment so we're going to go on and uh, watch those um, clips and uh, we'll talk about the money system and what I think is going on and what I think you should be aware of okay so this is the first story uh, from Zero Hedge uh, don't try to make sense of this major banks, I'm assuming that's plural, uh, give up on today's market. Uh, the whole stock market is absolutely nuts right now. 
confused by today's whipsaw market action, which is as much about month-end flows as it is about the uh, news flow post Powell jitters, break-evens, inflationary fears, and of course, whatever it is that Gartman may be doing. You are not alone. It is intraday macro update. The bank that also is also the world's largest currency trader had some very simple advice for its clients. Don't try to make sense of this. Yes, there is absolutely no doubt about it. Uh, when you have bots basically running the market today and uh, a situation that I heard of uh, was where Bloomberg uh, has bots that go around looking for stories in the money world and report on them and then you have bots that are used by the traders that react to the stories that Bloomberg writes who are reacting to the trades that the um, traders bots make the algorithms and so you've got bots reacting to bots and um, this is a very bad situation you know this is why we had these sudden uh, drop the other day uh, for no real reason and it's because they have stop-loss mechanisms in these bots so that when it reaches a certain point they just want to get out and all of a sudden you know you get this uh, incredible market reaction but uh, the thing I really wanted to point out here is this is a very troubling sign here this is the uh, Fred a chart interbank loans all commercial banks and you can see that it has fallen off a cliff now these interbank loans um, they're one of the very uh, sort of background mechanisms by which our whole financial system is lubricated these are like overnight loans bridging loans um, this kind of stuff uh, th 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 this is where deals haven't quite come together and you need some cash quickly and uh, so the banks basically are saying that they do not trust each other enough to lend to okay and whilst I was doing this research uh, this came up and I opened it up and I noticed that the uh, the date here um, is um, September the 30th 2008 credit markets frozen as banks hoard cash banks stop lending to each other across the globe after Congress's rejection of the 700 billion bank bailout plan prompted fears that more financial institutions would fail so uh, this is a repeat of history and uh, so the banks are hoarding cash and one of the reasons I think uh, this is happening is because I tried to explain uh, very simply how this money system works and how it ends up stalling on itself and that is I ask people to imagine that all the principal all the principal money in the world is a bathtub full of water and for every cup of payment we put into that bathtub the bank takes out a cup and a percentage which means that all of the principal ends up getting transferred into the bank's vault and all of the unpayable interest is left in the bathtub and so you reach a point you know where there's just not enough buyers or borrowers sorry to keep the whole banking system afloat and uh, that's why we've reached this stall point now where uh, the banks are trying to push this money out the door and they can't do it because they don't have any credit worthy customers left so they're in a Mexican standoff and of course uh, snipping at their heels is the Bitcoin crisis okay uh, because the as I said in a previous vi video that I, I believe Bitcoin is a bit like tally stick and that the banks who are actually quite heavily invested in Bitcoin and probably other cryptocurrencies are going to try and buy up as many of these coins as possible and then stick them away and uh, leave them dormant which is akin to destroying them so uh, yes Yes, I would say this is a very troubling sign and I would say that some kind of serious financial upset is in the offing in the very near future. Look, it just it's just fallen off a cliff. It's gone straight down 
to virtually zero. You should be very worried about this. You should be very worried about this as an indicator of what might be just around the corner. As I, remember, as I said, this is what happened. Credit markets frozen as banks hoard cash. This is exactly what happened in 2007. And of course, as we've seen in many, many, many financial uh, broadcasts, now certainly on the internet, is that nothing has changed since 2007. In fact, the conditions that created 2007 have just gotten worse. They just made it bigger. All of these banks became too big to fail. And uh, now they don't know what to do. Anyway, Ledger Wallet. Here we go. This is the website. I will leave the link below in the show notes. I had no problems, whatever. There was no, um, yeah, no delay. It took about a week and a half to uh, get here in Canada, and um, so I'm very pleased. And of course, it was perfect. Came straight from the factory. No problems. Okay, so. Cryptos. What are we to make of cryptos? Like I say, I, I believe that the drop um, is uh, uh, due to bank interference, and, and it's really interesting. You know, if you look at these patterns here, how they're almost identical. You know, for the major, the major coins. Okay, so um, why would all of them be doing the same thing at the same time? Anyway, this is a chart that uh, I go to. It is called uh, Coin Codex, and it lists all of the currencies. And um, you know, you can see there are literally hundreds of these things. And as Cliff High has said, you know, you are going to find a lot of these currencies are not going to make it. So when you open a coin like Lisk, for example, uh, you go down here, and it has um, a, a about. Uh, Lisk is a blockchain performing uh, and support cryptocurrency that was created as a fork for of Crypti in 2016. In August 2017, the value of Lisk jumped dramatically after a roadmap was published revealing a number of major developments that were in the pipeline. Uh, so a lot of these things are very undefinitive as to what they actually do. Um, it's supposed to be making transactions really fast. A distributed proof of stake uh, is a technology used for creating new blocks on the Lisk blockchain. But um, you know some of these coins, as good as the idea might might be, you know you may find that they're just absolutely unpractical. Unpractical, and so they're going to disappear. You know if you can't define what you do, or uh, how you provide value for people. There you go, Stellar Lumens XLM is a crypto platform that's designed to enable the fast and secure transfer of money at low cost. And so a lot of these things are duplicating. Okay. So we get onto Litecoin and Litecoin Cash. Okay, so I have made my exchange uh, for uh, Litecoin Cash. I had a few Litecoin and uh, Litecoin Cash were offering um, 10 to 1 um, for every Litecoin that you had uh, at the time of the fork. Okay, so here we are, the uh, fork happened and um, what you have to do is download your wallet. Now I did Windows uh, download 64-bit. Uh, it's going to take about two to four hours to download this. Um, they do have a bootstrap and uh, I tried to use, um, I tried to download the bootstrap but it was going to take six hours to download the bootstrap. So anyway, I gave up on that one. Uh, once it is downloaded, you can then open up your wallet and uh, under file, uh, you open up that box and uh, there will be an import key in there and you just pop in your key from your 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 private key okay and uh, click on refresh and you will be able to redeem your litecoin cash uh, tokens so what you have to do when you're doing this transfer 
Um, I took my Litecoin off my Ledger wallet and I put it into my Exodus wallet. Okay, so you open your Exodus wallet and I'm just going to use this Edgeless here as an example. Uh, but you'd have Litecoin, this would be your Litecoin account. So what I did was I transferred my Litecoin from my Ledger wallet onto Exodus. You then, you, t you type in uh, Shift Control D and that will open up these three windows here, uh, Exodus, Edit and Window. Click on Exodus, go to Developer, go to Assets, uh, whichever one you want, you know, you would go to a Litecoin in this case, okay. Export Private Keys. Click on that. It will say, are you sure? Uh, you'll click on I'm sure, I'm not going to click on I'm sure, but um, when you click on I'm sure, it then sends this to your apps folder. Okay, so you can go over here in your search, uh, type in apps folder, and that will come up. And, um, and uh, so we're going to cancel that. Now, after you have retrieved your private key you're going to take this amount here out of this account again I took it out I put it back on my ledger wallet so that when I put my private key into the uh, Litecoin cash wallet uh, these wallets are all the same anyway I clicked in on the import key and um, did the refresh and lo and behold I got my Litecoin Cash. Now, um, unfortunately, Litecoin Cash is tanking at the present moment. However, free is free. But as I said in my intro about the man in the middle uh, scam, you have to be so cautious when you are dealing with your private keys. Uh, this is another thing I wanted to show you. Uh, this is coin square this is a canadian based crypto exchange um, it is very easy to open an account uh, it's a basically walk walk you through application um, you do have to send some id so be prepared to um, do a scan you know of a driver's license and um, a bill a utility bill they ask for as id and so i scanned that to a memory stick and um, sent that off to them uh, but yeah, it was very easy and I have now successfully exchanged some uh, cryptocurrency, I exchanged a little Litecoin for some cash, uh, put it into my bank account as a test to see whether it would all go through and it successfully went through. So if you live in Canada, I can highly recommend CoinSquare. Uh, they do list things all in Canadian prices. Uh, they have all the charts in there. Uh, so you can take a look at um, what is going on with all of the coins and uh, they handle just about all the coins, all the main coins anyways and uh, some of the others as well uh, so they have live price index, historical charts and news so that should get you started and once again I have to reiterate when you are taking your private key and putting it somewhere else, you must absolutely ensure that the account that that key is from no longer has any money or any coins in it that will protect your coinage. And um, because every time you, like, you know, when you replace that coin back in that account again a new private key is generated okay so that private key that you used to redeem your coins at Litecoin Cash is now useless it's, it's rendered useless so anyway that should uh, catch you up to date with Bitcoin Litecoin crypto investing and uh, how to convert your cryptos into cash well, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you found it informative. Um, I know some of it is a bit of speculation 
uh, because we can never really know exactly what is going on behind the scenes and um, right now when you look around the world uh, the money markets are so fragile uh, the recovery is so fragile and certainly in Ontario here you know um, companies small businesses are being burdened with the taxation of high hydro cost okay this is a real problem with restaurants uh, whose primary energy input uh, is electricity um, yeah this is property taxes rising um, really you know businesses are going to start struggling and this is going to affect the recovery okay the loss of part-time jobs uh, we lost I think it's 55,000 part-time jobs in Ontario last month uh, which they attribute to the uh, raising of the minimum wage but I'm sure this will balance itself out because uh, those people were needed after all and uh, what is going to happen obviously is they're going to wheedle it out, out of our pockets in um, increased prices you know coffee tim hortons will go at five cents or something and uh, donuts uh, you know five or ten cents a donut and um, it'll be the same with every company that is manufacturing producing retailing wholesaling and whatever they will all be taking a little uh, extra money to cover the cost of the increased labor and this is of course the crazy system that we live in you know you never catch up uh, if minimum wage had been uh, kept up with inflation it would be about thirty two dollars an hour right now and so even fifteen dollars an hour is nowhere near enough to live on raise a family uh, buy a house and spend money back into the economy okay so if you enjoyed and liked this video please like and subscribe uh, click on the little bell and then you won't miss any of the updates and we will talk to you real soon you take care see ya